Why do you see yourself upright when you look at your reflection on the bottom of a spoon, but upside down when you look at it from above? Today, let's take a look at what happens to light when it strikes a curved mirror, whether that mirror be concave, like this, or convex. Let's also look at how to draw ray diagrams to determine where an image is formed by a mirror, and take a look at how to apply both the mirror and magnification equations. All right, let's start by taking a look at a concave mirror. When we shine this laser on the mirror, the light rays strike the mirror and bounce off it. Now, because the mirror is curved, the light rays don't all bounce off the mirror in the same direction. And when the light rays bounce off the mirror, they appear to converge at a point over here. This convergence of the reflected rays is a big deal. So to understand where and why the light rays converge, let's get rid of this laser and draw out a mirror. Now the shape of this mirror is a pretty big deal. You can see this mirror has a constant radius and a center of curvature right here. The center of curvature lies on what's called the principal axis, which runs through both the center of curvature as well as the center of the mirror. To see why light rays converge when they strike a concave mirror, let's follow several different rays all traveling parallel to the principal axis. Let's draw the first incident ray up here above the principal axis. Because the mirror is curved, light which is traveling parallel to the principal axis strikes the mirror at an angle. And because this mirror is a circle, the normal vector to the mirror is actually the radius vector of this circle. You'll remember, when light strikes a mirror, the incident angle and the reflected angle are equal, which means the reflected ray from this mirror will travel in this direction. Next, let's look at another ray which strikes the mirror. How about one down here? Because this ray strikes the mirror at a different position than our original ray, this ray will be reflected in a different direction. But again, the incident angle must equal the reflected angle. And again, the normal vector passes through the center of curvature. You'll see these two reflected rays converge right here. Now we could draw an incident ray anywhere we want. And so long as the ray strikes the mirror traveling parallel to the principal axis, the reflected ray will pass through this point, always. So we call this point where all of the reflected rays converge, the focal point. Now for some geometric reasons we don't need to get into. The focal point of a mirror is always halfway between the mirror and its center of curvature. So we've seen why light bounces off a mirror in a certain way. But to answer just why sometimes we see ourselves upside down in a spoon and sometimes upright, we need to look a little farther. So to answer this question, let's draw what's called a ray tracing diagram for a concave mirror. So here we have a person standing in front of a concave mirror. And what a ray tracing diagram does is identifies where the image of this person will form in front of the mirror. Now when we draw a ray tracing diagram, there are three incident rays which we need to track. The first incident ray travels from the top of our object, in this case this blue-headed person, parallel to the principal axis toward the mirror. Now just like we saw over here, when this ray, which is traveling parallel to the principal axis, strikes the mirror, it is going to bounce off of the mirror and pass through the focal point. The next ray we're going to look at is the ray which starts at the top of this person's head and passes through the center of curvature on its way to the mirror. Now as this ray passes through the center of curvature and heads towards the mirror, it is traveling parallel to the normal vector, or you could say perpendicular to the surface of the mirror itself. What that means is that ray is going to turn around and bounce right back along the line on which it came from. And last we have the ray which starts at the top of this person's head and passes through the focal point. Now much like this ray which came in parallel to the principal axis and bounced out through the focal point, the ray which passes through the focal point is going to bounce off of the mirror parallel to the principal axis. 
Now, all three of these incident rays originated at the top of the person's head, struck the mirror at different locations, and bounced off the mirror. But you'll see they all converge right here. And this is the position where the reflected image of the person is going to form. Now the image that has been formed is a tiny inverted reflection of the object which is in front of the mirror. Now we've figured out where this person's image will form using a ray diagram, but there are also equations that can do the exact same thing. Now these two equations can be used to calculate both the position and size of an image which is formed when an object is placed in front of a mirror. But let's save how to use and apply these equations and the nuances that go with them for another day. Now getting back to the spoon, we've seen why you see a small inverted reflection of yourself when looking at the top of a spoon, but we haven't answered why you see something different when you look at your reflection on the back side of the spoon. So instead of looking at a concave mirror like the top of the spoon, let's take a look at what you would see when looking at the bottom of the spoon which is a convex mirror. Now, even though we're dealing with a different type of mirror, we're gonna follow the same exact process to determine the location of the image which will form in this mirror. And just like before, we're going to begin by drawing a line from the top of this person's head parallel to the principal axis toward the mirror. But because the center of curvature and focal point are now over here, on the opposite side of the mirror, things can get a little bit confusing. When dealing before with a concave mirror, the reflected light ray passed through the focal point. But now that we have a convex mirror, the focal point is over here, and it's impossible for light to actually make it to this side of the mirror and pass through the focal point. The key to this problem is seeing that the normal vector right here still passes through the center of curvature. Now, as always, when the incident ray strikes the mirror, it's going to bounce off the mirror at an angle equal to the incident angle. And in this case, that means the reflected ray is going to travel in a direction as though it passed through the focal point. So you'll see this reflected ray heads up and to the left as though it passed through the focal point and we show the ray as though it had passed through the focal point using a dotted line on the backside of the mirror. It's not a solid line because there isn't actually a light ray over here. And we see a similar issue with the other incident rays, looking at the ray which passes through the center point. That ray travels towards the mirror, and when it strikes the mirror as though it was gonna pass through the center point, it turns around and bounces right back on the same direction along which it came. And the ray which is traveling toward the focal point is headed straight toward the focal point, but when it strikes the mirror here, it bounces off parallel to the principal axis. So just like we saw with the concave mirror, where all of the reflected rays appear to converge is where the image forms. With the concave mirror, we saw an inverted image form in front of the mirror. But now with the convex mirror, we see an upright image form behind the mirror. Now there isn't actually anything over here, but the image appears to your eye as though it is located back here behind the mirror. And again, the mirror and magnification equations still apply here. Well, let's save how to apply these equations for another video. And on that note, that's all for now.